let's finish this proof off. We're going to assume that we know how many ways there are of ordering the numbers 1 up to k and prove that there must be, well, that we can we use the same answer for k plus 1. Okay, so the claim is that there are n factorial ways of ordering the numbers 1 up to n. So here's how we do the induction step. We assume that the result is true for n equals k. So we assume there are k factorial ways of ordering the numbers 1 up to k. So now we want to see how many ways there are of ordering the numbers 1 up to k plus 1. Um, well, so if we are ordering numbers 1 up to k plus 1, we know that we've got k plus 1 different choices for the first element. So we have k plus 1 possibilities. first number. And now we've got k more numbers we have to put in an order. But we know how many ways there are of doing that, because they're k factorial. So there are k factorial ways of ordering the remaining numbers. by this assumption, by assumption, by that assumption. So in total, there must be k plus 1 times k factorial ways. So the total is k plus 1 multiplied by k factorial. But what's k plus 1 multiplied by k factorial? Well, it's just k plus 1 factorial, right? Because k factorial is k times all the numbers lower than it. So if you then multiply that by k plus 1, you've got k plus 1 times all the numbers lower than it. So that's definitely k plus 1 factorial. So we have shown that if we assume the result is true for k, then we can get that the result is true for k plus 1. And that, together with the starting case, n equals 1, shows that the result is true for everything by induction. Now, sometimes it can feel a little bit like cheating, but that's okay because it sort of is like that. Let's do another example to see what's going on. Uh, let's do the sum of numbers 1 up to n. Right. What is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to n? Right. So there's one what you might call combinatorial way of proving it. A combinatorial way of proving something is where you sort of turn the problem into a slightly different one um, that involves a little trick often and prove it using that. So here, if we want to add up all these numbers, one sneaky way of doing it is you can imagine writing all the numbers in a row all the way up to n. Uh, well, let's do it. Let's do n equals so here's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the order of the numbers we want to add up. Now, if we write the same numbers in a list underneath, backwards, because we've gone backwards, all of these sums are going to add up to 6. Right, so that's 6. And because then this one goes up by 1, and this one comes down by 1, that's also 6. That's also 6. That's also 6. 
and that's also 6, right? 5 plus 1. Now, how many, how many 6s have we got? Well, because we've got 1 for every place where we originally wrote a number, we've got 5 of them. So if we add up both these rows of numbers, if we add up all those numbers, we get 5 lots of 6. But is that the answer we want? Well, it isn't, right? Because we only, we only want half of it. Okay. If we add up all the numbers, we've done the sum of 1 up to 5 twice. So we have to divide it by 2 so that we don't count everything twice. So another way of looking at that is that we counted each number twice if we add up both of those things. And so the answer in this case is 15. So let's check it's true. 1 add 2 is 3, 3 add 3 is 6, 6 add 4 is 10, 10 add 5 is 15. Phew. So in the general case, we could have done this all the way up to n, right? So let's extend this picture up to n. I'll put it down here. So if we did 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n, then when we went backwards, we'd go, let's write another one in. We'd go 1, 2, now where are we going to get to here? Well, the last one's got to be n, hasn't it? So this one's going to be n minus 1. That's going to be n minus 2, and this one's going to be n minus 3. Now, this pair certainly adds up to n plus 1. That pair also adds up to n plus 1, and so on. So how many pairs have we got? We've got n We've got n pairs. Each one adds up to n plus 1. And we've now counted everybody twice, so we've got to divide it by 2. So that, which you might well have seen before, is the answer to this question. The answer is answer n times n plus 1 over 2. So we've now proved it, or at least we've made an argument about it, without using induction at all. But what I'm going to do now is show you a different way of proving it using induction. Now you might ask yourself, what's the point of doing it a different way if we already know the answer is true? Well, I mean, I'm going to suggest to you that maths isn't just about getting to the answer. Maths is also a journey. And just like when you go on a journey, there might be different routes you could take. People climb Mount Everest, but they climb Mount Everest by different routes. right? The, 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 the aim isn't only to get to the top. One of the, you know, getting to the top first is also really important. right? But climbing up different routes is also interesting. You maybe see different things along the way. And so it's the same with maths. Even once you know what the answer is, it can be really interesting to prove something a different way because it's like going on a different journey. You see different things and maybe you learn something else or get some new insights from it. So next, that's what we'll do. We'll prove this by induction.